Hello YouTube, this is Bill. Uh, for the next video, I'm gonna do a comparison of the most common and the most popular portable Bluetooth speakers for musicians. Okay, so it's kind of be, gonna be like a shootout. This is a very hot field right now, a lot of competition, and uh, many companies are coming on board with similar, similar items. So this is gonna be the best of 2021 so far. Okay, I just wanna start by saying what I did leave out. There are other Bluetooth speakers that I could mention. Uh, one is the JBL Eon One Pro. Uh, it's much heavier than these speakers. That's the main reason I left it out. It's at 40 pounds or so. But it's, uh, it's a very powerful Bluetooth speaker but it has a great weakness in its preamps for musicians is, is very weak. You have to turn up the volume for the vocals and guitars uh, to maximum. So it's just not a, unacceptable for musicians. And uh, the price was $1,200. It's now down to, I've seen it as low as 600. Uh, JBL is probably blowing it out at this point. Another speaker I'm not gonna be sharing with you is the LD Maui 5 Go. Very popular uh, with DJs who are doing small ceremonies, battery powered speaker, but it's uh, $1,000, so it's, it's more than any of these speakers, different price range. But the reason I'm leaving it out is not for the price, but because it has, it has columns you have to deal with. You have to carry the columns separately. So all these speakers are, as far as I'm concerned, these are the most portable speakers. There's no columns, it's just one unit, and, and you, you pick up and go. So these are the most popular type of speakers for buskers. Uh, I'm not a busker, but that's, that's what I've been told and that's what I, I see from, from their weight and their, their ease of use. Okay, another speaker that I'm not going to talk about because I've never heard it, but I am reading about it online, and that is the JBL Party Box 100. And it sounds very interesting, $350. It, it's, you can plug in a guitar uh, or a microphone with only, X, uh, not XLR, but quarter inch. It supposedly goes very loud, but it's 25 pounds. It is, you are able to mount it on a stand, but it's get, that's a, kind of in the heavy category already. At 25 pounds, um, I'm gonna be get, going to different, a higher level quality of speaker when I'm at that pounds already. Okay, so I'm gonna start. The first one, I'm going to start with the Behringer right here. It's called the Europort MPA40BT Pro. It's an 8-inch woofer, and it has a lot of reviews on Amazon, but very few reviews as far as musicians. So let's talk a little more about it. It goes, it's a loud, loud producing speaker. I, I've tested it myself. There, you're not gonna find any DB ratings on the internet. So uh, you can use my, my ratings. I've compared it to these other speakers. And it's able to go to 96.8 DB before distorting, before, cl before clipping. Actually, I, there's no clipping like that I saw that just starts distorting at that level. So that is very loud. That's pretty impressive performance. It has a 12 hour battery. And most of these other speakers also have very similar batteries. They all could do 11 to 12 hours. Okay, so 12 hours is wonderful. It has two XLR inputs, which is good. It's pole mountable. And one of its unique features is right here. Let me show you. This carry handle, which is none of the other speakers have that. And it's great. So I guess if you're carrying your guitar in one hand and a microphone and all your cables and things, uh, wheeling this along would make a difference. It's easily retractable, kind of like a luggage for, for the airport. Personally, um, I don't get too much exercise, so carrying these speakers around, I don't need to drag it with, with, the, with the handle. Okay, a couple of, it's very strong. Strong construction, it's hard plastic. Really tough speaker. It has a nice, and I'm going to the back here. It has a uh, battery indicator, which is very visible. Again, some of the other speakers don't have that. And as far as cons, one major con in my book is it does not have a line out to connect to another, a second speaker 
or a subwoofer. So again, that's kind of a deal breaker for me. I do want to have that option. If I want to have more coverage, I do would like to be able to connect the second speaker. It is a Bluetooth speaker like all the others. It does not have reverb, so that's another deal breaker for musicians. And it does not have app or firmware updatability. Okay, what is great about this speaker is the price, $230, which is the least expensive speakers in this group. And it's, it really does perform for that price. So this is my go-to speaker for just throwing it in the car. At that price, um, I guess I don't really care too much if it bakes in the sun, which isn't great for, for woofers, but it's, it's the least expensive one. If you pair this, if you put two of these speakers together at 460, uh, it, would, it would be an incredible system. I've never heard it, two of these paired up, but you, of course you would need a mixer. And so there goes your portability. Okay, next speaker. The Fishman, it's called the Fishman Loudbox Mini Bluetooth. Has a 6.5 inch woofer. And again, uh, it is rated at 108 dB. So it does go, it goes very loud for its size. It does have reverb. It has a 12 hour battery. And it's the heaviest of the group, it's 21 pounds, which is still very manageable. This is the, the, out of these speakers, I would say this is the most highly recommended um, for an acoustic guitar. And again, if you read on the acoustic guitar website, it gets, it gets a lot of reviews. It's very well considered as, as far as the clarity for acoustic guitar. Again, I do not play acoustic guitar, so, but it is a very clean Bluetooth amp as far as playing backing tracks. Um, again, many people like the, the easy controls right on the front where you can, if you're playing a guitar, you can just lean down and, and control it in comparison to an app where you have to start going through menus and things that a lot of people don't like. I want to mention something about Fishman and that is um, of all these speakers, they, they definitely have the best customer support. I had an issue with another speaker I own. I had lost the bag. And I called uh, Fishman. I talked to a gentleman named Derek. So if you have issues, call Derek at customer support. And he sent me a brand new bag for free. And the bag must, must be at least $30 to $40 value. So again, I can't say enough about Fishman's support. It does have XLR out on the back. Right here. Uh, it's a mic level. So you can run from there. You can run a second speaker, another powered speaker, or a subwoofer, or I guess... Um, people uh, go to a, a p line out to a PA system. One of the one of the um, the deal breakers for me on the Fishman, unfortunately, for my use, is it does not have a pole mount, so it sits on the floor. It does not tilt back, so that that's really a big factor. Every other one of these speakers has has the pole mount, so I don't know why Fishman did that, but I guess I guess their target audience again, acoustic guitarists. They, they, don't need it. they don't need to project for long distances so they can keep it on the floor. Uh, one of the, the negatives in my book is it does not have any um, firmware updatability and it doesn't have any app control. Again, a lot of the, the new technology is going that route. It doesn't have any charge meters. All it has on the front is, is just a, um, a light that tells you that it's charged if it goes on red, it means it's it's dead, <laughs> you better charge it. So again, that's not something I really like. And again, and another feature that I'm not happy about is it, it has a lead acid battery. All the others are using uh, newer technology, lithium ion, and this one is the older technology, kind of like a car battery, lead acid, which is heavier. But the downside is when it gets, when the battery starts draining, you start losing volume. And lithium ion, I've been told, doesn't do that. So that, again, that's another negative, unfortunately. And, but on the other hand, I heard the battery, when you do need to replace it, it's very cheap. You can get a, a, lith, a um, lead acid battery for this for like 15 or $20. So that's a great plus. Okay, let me move on to the next speaker. Okay, the next speaker is the JBL Eon One Compact. And it's been out 
a little bit now, uh, maybe pushing a year. It has an eight inch woofer. It's rated at 112 dB, which is very high compared to the other speakers, but we'll talk about that in a little while. On my, on my personal test, it couldn't get more than 102 dB um, before I started having issues. One of its pluses is it has three inputs, which all the others have two, so you can put two mics and a, and a guitar in there, so that's, that's a great plus. Again, pole mounted, it's 18 pounds, very, very manageable, well-built construction, it's heavy duty. It's $550, so that's, that's getting up in price. And I think I skipped the price of the Fishman, didn't I? The Fishman, excuse me. Uh, yeah, the Fishman is, is it's 500, 500. Okay, so going back to the JBL, it has, it has a wonderful app. That is, its, in my opinion, its greatest strength. Another great strength is it has two charging port, ports on the back. No, none of the other speakers have that, where you can charge your cell phone or your laptop from the speaker. So that's really great, especially if you're playing Bluetooth and you're playing for an hour or so and your phone starts going down, you just plug it into the speaker while you're playing and, and now your phone is right up to 100%. It, it does do firmware updates. And another great feature is on the back, the battery is very easy, easily swapped out. Again, let me show you that feature. Okay. So right here, you just turn this, this um, quick release and the battery comes right out. And that again, none of the other speakers do that. So that's unique to this speaker. Okay, let me show you the, uh, the app. Here is the app. And again, everything is right there. You have all your channels displayed. You can, you can, by finger control, you can raise and lower. Unfortunately, it doesn't have a mute. That's one of the um, things I would like to see in the future. And then here's the great feature that I love the most. And that is you hit, you hit EQ right here. And then right there you have complete control and you can really dial in the sound, uh, especially mids because most of these other speakers, I believe all of them, none of them have mid control, only the JBL. And again, in a, in a small speaker like this, mids is often lacking. So that is a great plus for the JBL. And um, I'm hoping that other speakers in the future have a similar app. So that's their, their great advantage. Okay, next speaker is our Bose S1 Pro. And that is, that is a very popular speaker. If you look on Amazon and all the other websites, it, it has thousands of reviews. So that is the one to beat. It has a six inch woofer. So it's a small woofer, but it has three, uh, three two and a quarter high frequency drivers. Again, that's Bose technology that other speakers don't have. It does have reverb. It has an 11 hour battery, which is great. It's pole mountable. And something unique about the Bose is it has an EQ where it automatically can read. Uh, if you tilt it back on the floor or if you put it on a pole, it automatically changes as EQ, which is very, it's a very uh, new technology. It has good build quality, strong, strong uh, plastic, and it's, the volume is excellent. Bose uh, specs say 109 dB. I'm able to, I was able to get 102 dB very close uh, on my testing without clipping or without harshness. So I'm going to say, right, I'm going to make it clear right now. The S1 Pro, definitely, if you push it to anywhere near 190 dB, it's not going to sound nice anymore. It's going to start sounding harsh to the ears. So at 102, where I, where I wrote that figure, that was still clean and crisp at that volume, which is very, very loud. So at, I'm thinking karaoke, I'm thinking backyard parties, camping, you don't need that kind of volume. This thing can really fill a, a home, but of course it's not a DJ speaker, right? It's, it's the lightest of the group. It's 15.5 pounds and it has a small form factor. It's, it's just wonderful as far as portability. One of the great features of the Bose S1 Pro is again, I'm not a vocalist, but I've read a lot on again, the acoustic guitar forum where you have singer songwriters and the Bose S1 
Pro is considered pretty much the best for vocals, which is very important. But again, that's because of the clarity of the high end. It has a firmware app, app uh, uh, ability to update in the future. And it has something called Tone Match. Again, it's for guitarists and vocalists where um, you, you can flip a switch and it'll actually change for different guitars and different microphones. A couple of cons, and that is the app does not have mid control. So compared to the JBL, it's, it's kind of a little like old technology. I don't know um, when they're gonna update it. The S1 Pro has been out for a couple of years already. And to me, um, Bose is, is playing catch up as far as the app. There's no master volume control. Again, musicians are, are stating that that's a weakness where they have to adjust each channel separately instead of being able to adjust just one dial and, and bring everything up or down. I bought a second S1 Pro recently, if you've seen my other videos, and they used to have a slip cover right here, the slip cover, and now they're charging for it. They left it out, I was surprised. I was looking for it in the box and it wasn't there. And I called up Bose and they said, sorry, and no more. So now you have to pay another $30. So Bose is, um, you know, they're getting every penny out of us, but you, you pay for the quality, obviously. Uh, compared to the, the uh, JBL, it's, it's harder, not extremely hard, but it's harder to switch out the battery. Sorry about that. It's harder to switch out the battery. I did buy a spare battery, and right there, it's $100, but it's nice to have when you're performing. Why, I say it's harder because you have to take a screwdriver. The screw is very small, you can lose it. So I'm carrying, I have to carry a Phillips screwdriver with me compared to the JBL where it's just that finger, um, finger turn and, and the battery just comes right out. So that's again, that's a, something I would like to see Bose do better in the future. It does have a battery indicator on the back, but it, it's like a, a flashing light, which I'm not really crazy about. I, I like, uh, again, the cheapest speaker here, the least, least expensive speaker, the Behringer has dots where you can just see, okay, four dots, that means I, I got full charge. So that's, but Bose does on, on, uh, on their plus column, you can go to their Bose app and it digitally will read out 100%, 20%, which is nice. But again, you have to go to an app, which is another step, it makes it harder. Okay, so as far as a summary goes, I'm thinking Bose is playing a little catch up at this point. The other speakers, some of the other speakers have features that the Bose doesn't have, but in my book, the Bose is very strong. So I, let me, sh I have a couple of cards here I'm gonna lay out and we'll kind of, We'll, we'll conclude our shootout by, by a vote here. So the, the least expensive speaker, the best price, is the Behringer at $230. Again, you can't beat it. If, if you paired them up with two of them through a mixer, you would have an incredible little system for under $500. Best bass response is the JBL. Nice. Um, that eight inch woofer gives a good bass response. We talked about vocals. Best vocals would be the, e, the um, Bose. Firmware updates, not all of them can do that. The JBL can. Again, some of those weaknesses that I mentioned, they could be, some of them could be addressed in a firmware update. Weight at 15.5 pounds is the Bose. It's super light, it's wonderful. For acoustic guitar, we talked about that. Fishman. Treble response and clarity goes to the Bose. Very clean speaker, as, you, as you're turning it up loud, it stays, it stays clean. Battery charge ports, the only speaker that does that, which is wonderful is the JBL. Also the JBL, I showed you that wonderful app where you can control the mids, goes to the JBL. And of course the, the Bose has an app, but it's very limited. I'm hoping they could add to that through the firmware. Fishman, no app, zero. 
And of course, Behringer at that price, there's no app control. Okay, so I am gonna say um, Bose does have firmware updates, which is important. Those two speakers have that. And of course, the carry handle, which is unique to the Behringer. That's important to you if you're carrying a load. And the loudest speaker here, like I said, it stays clean at high volume, is, is Bose. Okay, so I think we have a winner. I think we have a winner here. And the areas that the Bose ha excels in are super important as far as I'm concerned, which is weight, because we're talking about a portable Bluetooth speaker. Weight is everything here. Treble response, like I said, the, the clarity at the high end and how, how high you can turn up the dBs, the volume, and stay clean. So I have a little trophy here for Bose. Congratulations, Bose. But I'm gonna tell you right now, I hope Bose is listening. The, the, there's a lot of competition. There's speakers right around the corner who they're copying what Bose looks like, okay? And they have some of the features that Bose doesn't have. So Bose might be up for an upgrade in the near future. I'm gonna play a little, little tune here that I actually created on um, from the computer. And so it's my own, my own creation. It gives you an idea how loud the bows can go. Okay, so there it is, 108 dB, and it can go louder. And if you notice at the very end, that, that was super clean, that, that high end. So this speaker is a speaker that I purchased a second one, and if you've seen the, the, the other video I made, it's wonderful that you can pair this up um, wirelessly and make a stereo pair. Again, the app is wonderful there in that regard that you can put two together without a cable, and you can do left and right stereo but one of the weaknesses of the Bose S1 Pro is it has this wonderful high end and mids, but the, the low end is, is lacking a little bit. So I'm, I do pair it up with a small sub. Again, I'm gonna make a video about that in the future. I did make a video, video about pairing it up with a large sub, sub two, but that takes away the portability, and that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a micro system, something I could throw two or three pieces in the car, two speakers, a couple of poles, and a sub, and, and I'm off to play it out of the home. Okay, what I've done in the past before I bought the, the two S1 Pros actually, was I did pair up the, the JBL on a pole and I did a line out from the S1 Pro to the JBL and I used the JBL as kind of like a mini subwoofer because it has such a nice low end and it has that app that I could use from Bluetooth. I don't have to run and change anything from the back of the speaker. I can, all, I can do it from a distance from the audience perspective. So again, that app is, is is really a plus in my book. But at, so at this time though, I'm just running the two S1 Pros, again, lighter, quicker, and now of course with a real subwoofer, it's even louder. Okay, so that's it. I'm, I, I crown the bows, but I believe the others are catching up quickly. But at this time, 2021, in my book, best Bluetooth portable speaker, Bose. Couple of things I just realized I forgot to mention. On the Fishman, they have a very, very nice um, bag here that you can purchase separately. It's about, I believe, $73 right now. 
I got a deal. I got mine uh, thrown in with the speaker at the time I bought it. I don't think you're gonna find it anymore. It's nice heavy duty bag. You get, it has storage compartments. So that's something that I would recommend, especially uh, for the buskers out there. Great. Going back to the um, JBL, I, I realized, I mentioned that the volume was at a, about a, over 100 dB, very similar to the, the Bose, except I forgot to tell you the, the weakness. And that is, yeah, it, it can go that high, but when you start bringing it up to its maximum volume, the, the meter starts going to red. It starts clipping. Now, I've never heard any audible clipping. It, sound, it still sounds fine, but that red, uh, that red audible, that visual red uh, uh, dial is, is, is really bothering me. So I'm, I'm knocking the, the JBL down a couple of points. That's why I gave the volume award to, to the Bose. And that thing never clips at that. Like I said, it gets harsh at that volume. It's, you want to turn it down. It doesn't sound good anymore. But at 100 and plus dB, it still sounds super clean. Where the JBL is clipping, I, I believe, under, under 90 or so. It's, it's very frustrating. So that's what, one of the weaknesses I'm finding with the JBL. And the last uh, plus I forgot to mention, which is very important, and that is, again, for a busker, and that is the Bose has this wonderful backpack. And uh, it's going, it's not cheap again, it's $150. It's very heavy duty, it has storage compartments inside. And again, I, I lucked out when I first got my first Bose speaker, it came as the package. So I got my first Bose, $599 plus, plus the bag. It's a great deal. So anybody who busts, um, it's probably a necessity. But the fact that it's a backpack compared to just a carry bag, that's, that's a huge factor. So you're able to put this light speaker on your back, 15, 16 pounds, and you can go hiking. You can hike, uh, take a hike and go into the, the wilds, and then you, you have that 109 dB clarity with your phone. It's a pretty incredible combination. The next feature of the JBL uh, could be a pro or a con, you decide. And that is um, this high-tech knobs, the adjustment for the uh, volume, game, treble, bass, reverb. Uh, instead of your traditional knobs, they have a uh, lighted knob, green. And as you turn it, as the gain is turned up higher, the knob gets brighter. Again, um, some people would think this is an advantage, I guess, when they're playing in a low light situation. I personally uh, prefer the old school dials. All the other speakers that I introduced all have the old type of dials that from a, a quick glance, you can tell right away uh, your treble's at one o'clock, your, your bass is at 12 noon. So I personally like that, I, the repeatability of it, where you can tell right away and you can reset them at the at a second this is again visible it's the it's it's new i new is not always better in my book it's the new high-tech look you decide in my opinion uh it's actually a negative as far as the jbl compact here is your power meter on the jbl and again it's a a lit up bar so right now the, the bar is lit up to the top, the battery means it's full. Again, I prefer the, the other units that had just four or five dots. And as you can, you can see as the dots go down, how your battery is draining or, the, or on the other hand, they're all they're at full battery capacity. Again, nothing, nothing important, but it's just personal preference. Also another feature on the, on the JBL back here, is the power button. You literally have to hold it for, uh, I believe, five or six seconds before it turns on. And I guess this is a safety feature, so so uh, no, so I guess nobody turns it off or on by accident. But again, I, I prefer the old rocker switch where you just flip, flick it on and it's on. This one, you have to stand there for six seconds. Again, nothing major, but uh, not, not a plus in my column. Again, Thank you for watching. Hope you subscribe. I got a lot of other videos coming. That's it. Bye.